we both got involved in, in this whole program um, pretty early on in the year. And I don't think either of us knew, you know, where it was going to go. No, yeah, I, we started on uh, at our school's announcements, and I never thought I'd be sitting in a chair here in, in New Jersey uh, at Ryder University in front of a room, f room full of people um, live on stream, and I love every second of it. Is this too much? Am I going too fast? It's kind of what I do. You know what? Let's back up. Shall we begin? Connor and Adam are going. You know, when you, when you think about what we're trying to do here, you know, and this is like, you know, the weird teacher side of things, we want to put as many of you front and center. Yeah. You know what I mean? From a production side, the stuff that you guys do, I don't know if you know how special what you guys do is, but I would argue that you are literally the best production company in Scholastic I've ever seen. But the other thing we want to do is, right, we want to see as much as we can. So we move these over so that way, even if the screen is down, you can still kind of look down the sides and see the kids fist bumping and getting excited or getting mad and yeah. stuff like that. James, you're doing an awesome job, buddy. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, this is amazing. So this is now the third live event that we've had. Um, and every every one has been bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this one, actually, the space is amazing. Uh, I'm so excited to see how things go today. Uh, the, the, chance, the fact that the kids get a chance to play live like this with, with all of these spectators in this kind of environment where normally they play online or maybe at home, you know, uh, it's such a great opportunity and so amazing. I wish I had this when I was a kid. Today, I'm here with my production crew. We're helping out uh, with casting and with uh, camera work and such. The ones in the orange shirts are my team. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, we're pairing with another school from Pennsylvania who they're doing all, they have all the equipment. We're, we're literally at their beck and call. And I think another uh, very important thing to point out is, is the inclusivity of, of the Garden State Esports uh, organization as a whole. I mean, I'm sure everybody has noticed the, the translators that have been up on stage. We have the captions. And I think that's one of the biggest goals uh, for the organization, um, all, everybody here today, is to make esports more inclusive going forward. Absolutely, inclusivity of you guys working with both deaf and hearing students together, like that's the stuff that matters, right? As a teacher, like that's what I care about. As Mr. Avile said um, earlier on in the stream, uh, Inclusivity is one of the greatest um, goals of Garden State of the Garden State Esports League, and this is a great step forward into achieving more and more inclusivity as time goes on. Uh, Esports, video games in general, is just one of the best ways to connect with anybody around the world at any time you need. So if you need support, if you need someone to talk to, I mean, uh, you, you, you may not consider it first, but esports is the number one choice. Absolutely, it adds in that level of fun, that level of teamwork, that level of competition that uh, not, you don't really, you can't really get in, indoors anywhere else besides esports, and right. it's great. Uh, and I think that, uh, Connor, I, I think it's fair to speak for you and I say we we felt um, that support, we felt that camaraderie. We found some children here at the Garden State Esports Championship and we want to ask them some questions. What team are you here to support? The Bayshore Dolphins. The Bayshore Dolphins. Are you interested in playing in the eSports Championship in the future? Yes. Yes. Well, there you go. We have some future champions in the making. Back to you. That This is the extent of my knowledge, so uh, you guys are now in charge. <laughs> good, good, good luck, good luck, have fun. This is entire student run. All of our tech is run by students here. And uh, honestly, we've all been knocking out of the park and I'm very proud to be here. Yeah, it's, you know, you don't realize it, but um, you, everything
education here, all the uh, technology is being done by students. So um, we came down from Pennsylvania to um, Ryder University and we set up everything ourselves. Yeah. Um, so, you know, tons of amazing work done by the, the, the tech studio um, that's been doing our games throughout the season. Uh, and the, just a huge, huge commitment on the part of the students as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, people don't think about, how much commitment it takes. Because, mm -hmm. um, like, two days ago, um, on Thursday, our entire tech crew uh, had, had the day off school to drive, to take the whole day, drive down here and set up all the equipment, and then we came up today. Um, we're, what we're doing is, is, is light work compared to yeah. what they were doing over the past couple days. We're just a couple slackers. They're yeah. doing the real work. They're doing the real stuff. <laughs> Uh, so actually what we want to do is call up uh, a member of the TV studio, someone who has been instrumental in, in making all this equipment and technology work. So we want to call up uh, Ben Magnata, um, our valiant commander in all of this, uh, to say a few things and answer a few questions. Come on up, Ben. Pull the chair. This is Ben, uh, our loving captain. So Ben, I think the first question that I have is, is, how did you get involved in the TV studio? How did you get involved in all of the production aspect? Um, well, it started back in middle school where I was um, interested in the middle school TV studio and then I kind of expanded to also the tech crew, which was um, the auditorium, all that that handled with the production and the lights and all that. Um, I kind of took um, control of that and um, then Coming into high school, they didn't have that tech crew, so I just joined the TV studio, and now I worked my way up, and now um, that's where I am now. Yeah, uh, and I, I think uh, just related to the STEM, what do you want to do when you get out of um, when you get out of school? You see, you're a junior, correct? Yeah, I plan to um, major in um, telecommunication, broadcast, media production. So this is right up your alley. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So how did uh, how did uh, you get involved in the esports side of things? Um, well, it all started, um, I'd say three months ago, um, me and Mr. Borsmo were at a, a lacrosse scrimmage and he was talking to me in the press box. He was like, you interested in broadcasting esports? And I was like, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. Let's, let's do this. And in th just three months, look at it now. We're here, Ryder University in New Jersey, two and a half hours away, and it's awesome. Yeah, because you actually have kind of become uh, sort of a captain in all this on, on the AH Media side. Um, you really did show like a, a lot of leadership, and I commend you for that. That was, that was honestly really impressive. Yes, thank you. Um, my favorite part of it definitely was um, incorporating the caption technology on Twitch, where they don't have the automated captions to make it accessible for both um, us and the deaf and hard of hearing students. That was my favorite part of it. Yeah, and I, I think that's also uh, just watching it now. It's, it works great. It's really cool, yeah. um, and I, I think it's an awesome step forward. But Ben, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure you got to get back down to your tech uh, dungeon down there uh, and help everything run smoothly. So thank you for coming up and answering the questions. Yes, thank you. You guys do a great job. Thanks, Ben. We'll try. Now is the best opportunity to bring uh, up one of the people who have given the opportunity to some of these people, uh, Mr. Doug Borsma, if he would like to come up on stage. Hello, Mr. Borsma, how are you? I'm doing great, guys. How are you doing? Great. Phenomenal. Fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like we've said, uh, this, this has been a, a union between um, Abington Heights and WPSD. Um, how did this kind of get started uh, at, at almost the, uh, the administrator, the administrative level? We said, you know, we don't have a lot of students. Our school is very small. We only have 61 kids on campus. And um, as such, we, it's difficult for us to field a traditional athletic team. Yeah. So we approached the Abington Heights School Board and administration and said, hey, would you be willing to uh, come in and be part of our eSports program in exchange for our students being able in seventh and eighth grade to be part of the Abington Heights athletic programs? And so we had some students take advantage of that this year. One student in particular um, medaled in uh, districts, uh, like just had an outstanding track and field. And then uh, we've had an amazing experience with um, putting together deaf and hearing players from 280 miles apart, um, putting that together and conquering things. Because you know, Valorant, playing Valorant isn't hard enough, right? We, wanted, <laughs> we, we, we thought we'd just go a little harder. And so we said, we'll add in there We'll add in players who can't see each other, they speak totally different languages, and we're gonna stick them together and make a team out of them. And we said, what could go wrong? 
Well, what we really should have asked is what could go right? Those players have had such a dynamic experience. It just started as an idea, what else can we do to make this happen? And the school board, like you mentioned, uh, when, we, when we approached Abington Heights, a hundred percent unanimous support for what we're doing. And so, you know, the vision is not just that we have an amazing team, because we've got that, or, and that we have an amazing stream, but that we continue to be active in um, sending this out to other schools. But we also have a vision for expanding this into a national deaf esports federation. That would so be fantastic. You, isn't that isn't that crazy? Yes. Like now, if you if you'd asked me about that a year and a half or so ago when we first started Rocket League, I would have been like, "There's no way that we could do this." Now we have the five largest schools in the country serving deaf and hard of hearing students who are interested in being part of a National Deaf Esports Federation. And that's partly because we tried something new and we said, this is working so well. And then the media side of this, the production side of it, allows us to showcase how great it is and the benefits for so many students. I mean, look at this theater. It's filled with, with kids who are passionate about this game and others. And it's something that's very validating that I can do this, I'm good at it, and people want to celebrate. I guess I would say one of the greatest things about the pandemic is nothing scares us anymore. <laughs> We're willing to try anything to make it work. And so, you know, if you think back to those early years when everybody's trying to get in on a Zoom meeting and make it work, Boy, this is so much better, right? We're like, we can do our favorite activities and export that, uh, you know, on a Twitch platform. We can we can bring in great casters. We can offer opportunities to students to showcase their talents, to develop their skills, and give them real world opportunities. And so, yeah, let's bring it on. Let's do more. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Borsman, for telling us a little thank bit about guys, everything. And thank you for all your time, the hard work that you put in to prepare, um, just the fun that you have. You're a lot of fun to watch. You guys do a great job on your analysis, co color commentary. Um, we couldn't do it without you. We're thankful to have you, and uh, we love you guys. We're glad to have you part of the team. That's high thank praise. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are here at Garden State Esports Championships, uh, the Spring Championships, and I'm here with Austin today. Um, Austin, what do you have to say about your experience today? Exciting. Um, it was really more than even I expected. It was so much fun, and I, you know, I've really learned a lot. I can't can't wait to come back and and be part of this again. All the gaming that was available, uh, all the stuff going on. It's just been I've, I've loved it. It's been fantastic. Um, have you been at uh, big events like before? Is it your first time in here? No, this is the first time I've ever been at anything like this. Yeah, me too. I think it's great. It's really it's a big event here. Uh, what do you think about your team? Because I know you're in a hybrid team right now. So what? How was your season with your team together? Yeah, our season was actually uh, very good. Uh, you know, I, and I think Jem's here. He would, he would say the same thing. We've had a blast this weekend. Um, but getting to know different players, um, you know, you know, I've learned a lot from them. I hope they've learned a lot from me. And we just had a great partnership. It's been a terrific season. Oh, well, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you later. Esports Spring Championships. I'm here with Casey Ames, our lead chat operator. Okay, Casey. So, how's your day been going? How's the chats doing today? I mean, it's really it's it's better than it should be because there's uh, when there's a lot of people in the chat, it can get really hectic, and then there's a lot of people sometimes swearing. But I'm just I'm really I'm really glad that. The, Keeping people are keeping it on the low down a lot today. Um, so do you like operating this? Do you think it's a new environment for you, or have you been doing this before? I mean, I have done it a little bit, but I think it is fun because I it's a way for me to express like my excitement for the game without actually screaming my head off. 
And I want to ask Casey a special question. What's your personal gamer tag? So my gamer tag is a play on my name. It's uh, Casodia, but it's spelled C-A-S-O-D-Y-A. <laughs> Yes, we're having a lot of excitement from our crowd for Casey up here. Well, thank you for watching and thank you for tuning in and we will see you guys later. The, the, the entire goal of this is to uh, draw more attention to esports as a whole. I mean, uh, the, the biggest thing is we want people to get involved. We want um, people to come in and see the potential. And as Mr. Vila said, uh, Vila said in his opening, um, you can't think about STEM unless you consider esports as well. I yeah. mean, they're so intertwined. Uh, you're going to have so many jobs just related to the video game industry going forward. Having this opportunity to get involved um, early on is so important to someone, you know, to a lot of kids' future careers.